Calling All Cars, a presentation of the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars, attention all cars, attention all Marin County Sheriff's cars. Broadcast 61. Four convicts just escaped from San Quentin Prison. Using a state car. License Diamond E 6154. Diamond E 6154. The convicts are reported headed north. All cars use discretion and hold five possible. As the escaped convicts have kidnapped four members of the prison board and are carrying them as hostages. Stand by for further orders. On tonight's program, you will hear speeding automobiles, roaring engines, the shriek of sirens as police cars tear over the roads on the trail of fleeing convicts. Police cars must always be ready for such emergencies. They must leap into action the second they get a warning over the police radio. That's why so many use Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Police officials in leading cities of the Southwest testify that the unusual speed and power created by Rio Grande's distinctive cracking process enables them to get the performance they demand. The men at the wheels of police cars are picked men, and police pick their gasoline just as carefully. That's why, after testing and comparing leading brands, more police cars and emergency equipment in California and Arizona are powered with Rio Grande cracked than with any other gasoline. There's a Rio Grande station near you, offering exactly the same gasoline police cars specify. Fill your tank. Thrill to the feel of police car performance in your own car. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that we bring you the complete radio dramatization of the San Quentin prison break, which occurred last Wednesday. This afternoon in San Francisco, Clyde Stevens, confessed bank robber and accomplice in the prison break, pled guilty to three counts of robbery with a gun and was sentenced to a term of from seven years to life on each count. It is believed that as we go on the air with the dramatization of his story, he is already en route to Folsom Prison. It is with pride that we remind you that Calling All Cars has brought you the story of Burma White as she was leaving for Tehachapi Prison. The May West Jewel robbery, the day one of the robbers was apprehended in Miami, Florida. The story of the crime career of John Dillinger, 72 hours after his execution in Chicago. And the Gettle kidnapping case, 48 hours after Mr. Gettle's release. But it is with greater pride that we remind you that William N. Robeson, author and producer of Calling All Cars, dramatized the San Quentin prison break over the Columbia Don Lee Network a half hour after the capture of the escaped convict, scooping every newspaper in the world. Four hours later, Mr. Robeson wrote and produced another last-minute radio station of the week's biggest story to the entire nation over the Columbia Coast-to-Coast -Coast Network. This, we believe, marks a milestone in radio broadcasting. And the Rio Grande Oil Company wishes publicly to thank the writer and producer of Calling All Cars, Bill Robeson, who consistently, for over a year, has served the radio public of the West, police news, while it was still sizzling hot. We now take you to San Francisco, where you will hear from the man who led the posse which captured the escaped San Quentin convict at Valley Ford. It is our great pleasure to present from the studios of KFRC in San Francisco, District Attorney Albert Bagshaw of Moran County. Good evening. Last Wednesday afternoon, I spent the most exciting two hours of my life. I've hardly returned to normal yet. I had gone to Tamales with Under Sheriff Blum to prosecute a petty case. We were following the routine of our duties when a telephone call from San Rafael plunged us into a melodrama as wild and exciting as any Nick Carter story you have ever read. That is the story you're about to hear on tonight's Calling All Cars. Before we go into this dramatization, which I know you are all eager to hear, I would like to point out to you a very serious condition which has existed for some time and which the prison break of last week has brought into the spotlight of public notice. I refer to the overcrowded condition of California prisons. 
Built to accommodate 3,294 inmates, the San Quentin prison is now jam-packed with over 5,747 convicts. The result is a, a seething unrest among the prisoners. The rise in crime during the past years has been responsible for this overcrowding. Critics have pointed out that our parole system is lax. This may be so, but the brutal fact is that the parole board has to release many prisoners in order to make room for those coming up from the courts. So long as paroles are easy to obtain, crime will flourish. Our police forces in California do a splendid job, but the prison situation which causes the evil causes them to repeat over and over again the same work. Recidivists, habitual criminals, should be put away for good. But we in California, unfortunately, have no place to put them. We must have another prison. When we can adequately care for the criminal, for as long as he is sentenced, we will show less desire to repeat, he will show less desire to repeat his acts. As it is now, men like Clyde Stevens do not wait a week after the release to start robbing banks again. This must be stopped. We have efficient police. They do their duty. And having done it, are forced to do it all over again. It is not only our faulty parole system which is to blame, but, is, but it, it is also our faulty prison system. Uh, May last Wednesday's deplorable incident served to arouse the people of California to demand the proper check against the rising tide of crime. Thank you and good night. Can't you listen to reason? You've got my watch, my money, my car. What else do you want? You ain't got enough dough on you. I can't help that. I've given you everything. Won't you let me out? Sure. That's not a bad idea. Sure we'll let you out, eh, Eddie? Sure thing. And there's a little souvenir to remember us by. Mm. Open the door, Eddie. Don't, 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 don't throw me out. Slow down, please. What for? We're in a hurry. Go on, scram guy. There. I never knew a guy would bounce like that when he hit the road. Such was the crime that in 1931 sent Joe Christie, graduate of six prison terms in the Middle West, to San Quentin Penitentiary for from one to 25 years. Order. The attorney for the defense has the floor. Your Honor, my client has decided to make a confession and save the court valuable time. Very well. Will the defendant take the stand? When you see, Judge, it was this way. I pulled these jobs, but I wasn't alone. The coppers think they ain't got nothing on Lillian. But she's hot, Judge. She's part of the joints for me. Guess we must have knocked over 25 stores. Lillian's just as guilty as I am. If you send me up, you ought to send her up, too. And you call yourself a man. You get this girl into trouble like this, and then you try to save your skin by turning state's evidence against her. Well, it isn't going to help. You'll serve time, all right. There is no place in society for a skunk and a rat like you. With the stigma of skunk and rat attached to him, Alexander McKay entered San Quentin in the summer of 1931 to serve from five years to life for robbery. All right, you mugs, back up against that soda fountain and don't pull any funny stuff. Clean that cash register, Ben. Okay. Where are you going, sailor? No, I was just turning around. Well, stay put. I said stay put. No, you plugged him, Fred. I meant to. Come on, scram. For robbery, grand larceny, and assault with intent to commit murder, Fred Landers was sent to San Quentin three years ago to serve two terms of from five years to life. Now, look here, Street. We're wasting a lot of time. I know you held up that bank on College Avenue. And whether you want to confess or not, I'm going to send you up. Uh, you can't keep me in the big house. Well, that won't be my job. But I'm going to send you up there. So you might as well make my job easier by confessing. What will you do for me? You can't make a deal with me. You rob that bank and you'll do time. Okay, I pulled that job. But I'll make a little bet that I'll be out of stir before they make you chief for getting this confession. <laughs> Ray 
Rudolph Strait, confessed bank robber and veteran jailbird, tried twice to make good his boast. Once he sawed through the bars of his cell. Another time he was caught working the bolts of his cell door with a bent wrench. He was thrown into solitary. Returned once more to his cell, he strikes up an acquaintance with Clyde Stevens, another bank robber in the prison yard. Yeah, you look like a tough guy to me, Strait. I am. You want to get out of this joint, huh? Don't you? Sure. I'm getting out, too. How come? I got dragged. The pro board will hand me my walking papers next time it meets. Yeah? Sure. They gave me a five-to-life rap. And but... you're getting out after three years? Sure. Parole's a cinch in this state. Well, I ain't going to wait for no parole. That's the way I figured you. And I got a plan. Yeah, what is it? As soon as I get out, I'll fix it so I can get some gaps into you. You will? That's all I need. Give me a good gap and I'll walk right out of here. Okay. I'll get you the gats. You get a couple more guys you can depend on. Yeah. We join up as soon as you make the break. By that time, I'll have some joints cased. Why, son, we'll make that Dillinger mob look sick. It's okay with me. All right. Now stop this monkeying around with files and bent wrenches. Stay out of solitary and you'll be at the business end of a 45 in no time. On October 31st last year, Stevens was paroled. And within two months, he is wanted by San Francisco authorities for bank robbery. Although the police are unable to find the man, he manages to keep in contact with his prison pal, Rudolph Strait. One day a fortnight ago in the prison carpenter's shop. Hey, Alec. Yeah? There's that prison truck again. Yeah, what about it? It's a truck that goes in and out of the wall. Stephen hid the gats in it. They're under the dash. They've been there for two weeks and I ain't had a chance to get them out. That driver's level to find him. That's what I'm afraid of. Now listen. Watch that guy. And if you got a chance, blown those rods and hide him somewhere. Yeah, where? Now, that take of nails will be okay. Now, look. I got yeah. the driver now. He's walking toward the office. I'll keep my eyes on him and you grab those gats. Okay. Get them okay? Sure, I got them. I'll stash them in that keg. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Now we'll roll this keg behind this workbench where nobody can see it. Hey. Hey, there's just you and Joe Christian and me in this deal, ain't there? That's right. Well, Steve said us four gats. Yeah? Well, in that case, we better make it a quartet. Hey, who do you want to cut in? Uh, how about Landers over there? Yeah, he's okay. He can take it. I'll talk to him. Hey, Fred. Yeah, Rudy? Come here. What do you want? Act like you was giving me a hand. I want to ask you something. What is it? Look here, Landers. Got a forty-five in your hands. You take it on the lamb out of this joint? What are you doing? Trying to kid me? No, we're on the level. Hey, you bird. Separate. Get back to work. What do you think this is, a tea party? I'll tell you about it later, Fred. Beat it. last Wednesday morning, the inmates of the prison file into the washroom. Straight signals to Christie, Landers, and McKay. Cautiously, they move over toward him and engage in guarded conversation. Come on, get your face dry and get over there. What's up, Rudy? I asked you the other day if you'd be willing to blaze out of here with a 45. Yeah. Well, today's the day. I thought you was fooling. I'm on the level. How about you, boys? I'm all set. Anytime you are, Rudy. What makes you set on today? You know, the prison board's meeting with the warden this morning. None of these flat-footed guards want any trouble while the big shots are here. Maybe they'll get some whether they want it or not, eh, you know, Rudy? You know, the way we get so close to it, I, I've been kind of thinking, see? Uh, suppose it don't work. Suppose we get plugged or something. You ain't jealous, are you, McKay? Of course I ain't jealous. You better not be. You're in this too deep now to back out. They want to back out. I was just thinking... Do it. This ain't no chin fest. We gotta work fast. What do we do for gas? It's all taken care of. You ain't got nothing to do but come along and do what you're told. We got some 45 stashed away. That's well. Who's that? Uh, one of the cons. Fresh fish, I think. I don't know him. You think he heard anything? No, uh, he wouldn't be making a noise if he was spying on us. You can never tell about stools. Now, look. The board's meeting in the warden's office, eh? Yes, so what? I've been tipped off that they'll go over to the warden's house for lunch, eh? No. What's that got to do with that? Uh, if I knew how dumb you were, I wouldn't have cut you in. I got this. We drive up in the old Ford like we were doing our work. But all the time, we got the 45s in our belts, see? Yeah, then what? So we go in and we snatch the warden and the prison board. What? You're not. No, I ain't. We snatch the warden and the prison board. They'll come in handy. Cops won't shoot so fast when they know we've got big shots in tow. Let's go. The warden and the prison board. They've been handing out and turning down paroles all morning. I'd like to see how it feels to be the guy on the carpet. And for once, we'll be the big shots. <laughs> kind of a funny idea, don't you think? It's okay if it works, Rudy. Listen to me, you guys. You stick with me and do this job the way I planned it. And we'll all be out of this joint in less than four hours. A few minutes before noon, Joseph Stevens, Frank Sykes, Warren Atherton, Charles Cox, and Mark Noon, members of the state prison board, take a recess from their morning meeting and join Warden Hollihan at luncheon at his home within the prison walls. The pleasant sun-filled room gives no indication of the impending danger that lies just outside those curtained French windows, where eight hard eyes are watching every movement. 
Eighteen years, hearing every word. Well, Warden, you're to be congratulated on the splendid work you're doing, especially in view of your limitations here. Well, thank you, Mr. Sykes. I can assure you that no one knows better than I the necessity for a leaving congestion here in prison. We have almost twice as many prisoners as the institution was built for, and the result is unrest among the men. But it can't be helped. Yeah, I presume you feel as though you were living on the edge of a volcano all the time. <laughs> well, something like that. You see, gentlemen, the granting of early paroles is by no means the answer to our problem. You're quite right, Warren. The only answer is the erection of another prison. Uh, pardon me, but there seems to be somebody at the door. Take him out, Dan. Hey, what's the meaning of this? We mean business, Warden, up with him. Hey, look here. You can't come in here like this. Oh, yeah? I've been wanting to do this for a long time, Warden. Oh! Oh, all right, Rudy, cut it out. Oh. Cut out the rough stuff. I don't like that guy. Okay, snap out of it. We didn't come here to bump the warden off. Just what did you come here for? We're going to get out of this place and we're going to take you with us. What for? <laughs> You'll make good bulletproof vests. Now, don't you realize there's a law against kidnapping in California? You can be executed for this. Yeah, well, we're the law. And if there's any executing to be done, we'll do it. Now, look here. If you boys are on the square and promise there won't be any shooting, I'll go with you as hostage. But please remember, I'm the father of four children. I guess we'd better take all of you. Then we'll be sure. Now, you guys take off your clothes. Why? We're going to need them. Come on, let's have your coats and vests. You can wear our uniforms. No, but a Come on, walk over. Well, I'll accept you. You're too fat. None of us can wear your coat. Yeah, that's a consolation. But you can do something else for us. You call the prison gate and tell them to send the warden's car over and that we're coming through the gate and have it open. Oh, but a Go on, there's the phone. Well, all right. Let me have the west gate, please. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, th- this is Mark Noon speaking. Uh, send the warden's call over to the house, please. Yes, yes, that's right. Tell him you're all coming through. Uh, the whole board will be coming out in a minute, so have the gate open, please. That's right. <laughs> and you birds look like a swell or something, a con. And we look just about as respectable as you did when you had these calls on, I guess. Come on, Rudy, let's get going. Don't get excited, Joe. Okay, gentlemen, here's the car. Out through the side door here. Oh, what about the warden? I will have to leave him. He'll come through sooner or later. Alec, you talk to those guards. All right, gentlemen, make it snappy. Stop those rifles. Uh, what the devil? Stop them shoot these men. Okay, gentlemen, file in the back. You there, stay at the wheel. You're driving us. There's other guard. You stand on the running board. Come on, boys, make it snappy. Look here, man. You will never get away with it. Man! This is my party. That's fine. Okay, boys, let's go. Kick that sign open and drive straight to the west gate. San Francisco police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Watch for Judy Baker sedan. License Diamond B 6154. Four contact. in the Hamilton Field stands by for orders that will send them searching from the air. The state teletype pins the log web across California, describing the escaped convicts, describing their fleeing car. A few miles out of San Rafael, the convict car turns right, heading for the Black Point cutoff. As they come inside of the cutoff, the drawbridge swings open with exasperating slowness. They pull up with a burning screech of brakes. Better be out of that heat when that monkey has to start pulling switches. Let's do it. Go back, Rudy. You're telling me. Now we got to go back into all the cops in the world. If you don't mind, shut up. I want to ask a question. Let him talk. It'll make him feel good. Ain't you never heard of an emotional catharsis? What's that? Some kind of snow? What's in your mind, Toots? Uh, what I want to know is, how in the world did you get those guns? <laughs> That's a professional secret. And what you don't know won't hurt you. Rudy, look. What? Cops ahead. Get your gadget. Seven that siren mark and drive like hell. <laughs> I figured. They're afraid to shoot on account of our passengers. You boys are a great help to us. Now, look here, driver. Uh, what's your name, by the way? Jones. Oh, one of the Jones boys, huh? Well, listen, Jonesy, just pull up a minute. I'm going to let your fat friend out here. What? Yeah. You're going to get out, and you're going to tell that posse back there to call out the dogs, or we'll bump off your pals here. Give us a half hour, and everything will be okay. Pull up, Jonesy. 
Get out. And don't forget that message. Get going, Jumpy. Mark Noon, secretary of the prison board, immediately phones the prison of his whereabouts. With orders to hold fire as long as possible, the army of the law goes into action. From San Francisco, from Oakland, from Berkeley, come officers. Quickly, the peace forces are organized. And with police radio blaring last-minute flashes, a posse composed of hundreds of men in scores of police cars block every highway and byway in Petaluma and Moran counties. The public closes in, combing the hilly north coast country. As the convict's car swoops into Hicks Valley Road, the posse fights them. The chase is on. Deputy sheriffs pull down their shotguns from the roof of their high-powered police cars. State patrolmen crouch over their white motorcycles, unlimber their guns, fire and scream. Ten miles, twelve miles, fourteen miles, they roll west of Petaluma. The law holds its guns in readiness. The convicts, still out of range, apprehensively look backwards. Then, when they are eighteen miles away from Petaluma, the convict's car takes a turn too sharply. The car skids. The law is within range. Guys. Hey, Jonesy, keep the car on the road. Can't help it. They shot off the rear tire. Oh, what's the matter with you? Well, they got me in the lane. Uh, try to pick off that guy on the motorcycle, Joe. Come on, Jonesy, more speed. I can't. This back to the rear tire off. Well, I can. Don't pull me up, but just... Uh, Pick him out, Alex. I'll drive the damn thing. So you're shooting. They're gaining on us. I can't get any more speed out of this thing than he did. There's some building jump ahead. Let's fight it out there. Okay, I'll slow down. You guys jump. All right, Frank. I think so. I tell you, you do The love of God, Sheriff. That's Anderson. They made us change our clothes. Where are the men? Ran into that building. Okay, men, surround the building. We got the back doors behind you. Hey, I got him. Let him have it, boys. Hold your fire. Please surrender. Then throw your guns out and come out with your hands in the air. Take them down and slap the handcuffs on them, Sheriff. Yep. And boys, have you had a pleasant trip? What you do? Met you, Rudy? No, I got him before he got me. And now, unless there are any objections, suppose we return to San Quentin. There are some questions I'd like to ask you. Some very pertinent questions. Rudolph Strait, the convict leader, dies on the way to the hospital. James Stevens and Frank Sykes, not dangerously wounded, are taken to the Petaluma Hospital. And Warden Hollihan lies in the prison hospital, critically injured. As District Attorney Albert E. Bagshaw of Marin County begins his investigation of the prison break. Lawyers, I'm not going to mince any words with you. Two California laws threaten all of you with death penalty. One says the kidnapping is a capital crime. The other says that any life termer involved in a prison disturbance in which bodily injury occurs is liable to be executed. The latter applies to at least two of you. Well, we know this is an outside job. You haven't a chance to beat the rat. I want to know where those guns come from. Why, Stevens turned into it. Shut up, you rat. I never expected you'd spill, McKay. You haven't changed any since you took that girl to prison with you, have you? Why, Stevens, eh? Know him, Captain? Sure, I know him. He was paroled about three months ago, and we're looking for him for bank robbery. We had a trap set for him day before yesterday, and he knocked over a bank right under our noses. I got a line on his hideaway, and I was going up there this afternoon to knock him over when well, this thing happened. You've got a double reason for a visit now. I should say I have. I'll have that boy in the can before midnight. I promise you that. I wouldn't be too sure about that, you big flatfoot. That guy's a killer. It is close to midnight. San Francisco Bay is shrouded in deep fog. Captain DeLay, at the head of a posse of 15 men, crosses the narrow strip of water between the mainland and Sherman Island in the delta of the Sacramento River. Cruising at half speed, the motorboat scarcely makes a sound. Quietly, they shunt into a little pier, scramble on the land. That's his shack. Lights are still on. Take it easy. Surround the place, boys. And have your guns ready. All set? Set. Let's go, then. Pick him up, Stephen. Hey, what the devil? Hey, what's this all about? Pick him up, I said. And your pal, too. What do you want us for? Running guns into San Quentin and a couple of bank robberies. I don't know nothing about running guns or bank robberies either. Oh? Huh? Well, we'll talk about that later. Plant the rapist on him, Tom. The officers return across the black waters of East Bay with their two captives, Clyde Stevens and Albert Kessel. They leave their boat at Antioch and walk through the deserted streets of the little town to their waiting police cars. Suddenly. Oh, 
Now, boys, see if he's got away. Huh? Stop, Ralph! Huh? That patrol. Down the corner. I'm gonna fix that guy. What's the big idea, Mug? You dicks are gonna take me in. You can bump me off first. Well, I don't think that'll be necessary. But if they don't come quietly, why? I guess we'll have to take you in this way. Come on, boys. For three days, San Francisco police questioned Clyde Stevens, and finally on Saturday he confessed and explained how he had smuggled the guns into San Quentin, hidden in the prison truck. He was sentenced to from seven years to life in Folsom Prison this afternoon. District Attorney Bagshaw is now preparing the prosecution which may possibly send Christy McKay and Landry to the gallows. And high state officials are studying a wide sweeping prison reform, which will include revision of the present parole system, separation of habitual criminals from first offenders, creation of a unified state police system, and possibly the erection of another state penitentiary in Southern California. Speeding police cars played an important part in this sensational capture. Nearly every day you hear police sirens and watch police cars roar past. Cars that are powered with Rio Grande cracks. And it is from this gasoline that they get their tremendous power and speed. Police use Rio Grande because it saves precious seconds, seconds when human life is often at stake. Police know that Rio Grande cracked is the fastest starting gasoline, the speediest and the most powerful. But they also know because they keep accurate records that Rio Grande is economical gasoline to buy. Your own car may need emergencies any second. When you cramp hard on the gas, you want action. If you've got Rio Grande in your tank, you'll get action. You can enjoy police car performance in your own car. Just drive into the independent station near you with a big Rio Grande sign. Ask for Rio Grande crack with Petra Ethel. It costs you no more than other gasoline, but you get much more for your money. And if you're interested in true detective stories, ask for your free copy of Calling All Cars News. This unique new publication brings you the truth about crime, police, movies, and the radio. Ask any Rio Grande dealer for a copy. It's absolutely free. <laughs> Calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 61, regarding a prison break at San Quentin. Convicts are now returned to prison, that's all. Calling all cars, 